Hey there, guys. I just wanted to show you something real quick. Um, there's a strange behavior that I think needs to be captured on video to really uh, tell you what's going on. Check this out. I'm going to scroll. I'm just literally going um, to move around using the arrows inside of the data grid. So I'm moving to the right. All of a sudden, once I get to the, um, uh, the farthest right column in the data view, I'm then locked here on the right side where every single time I hit, uh, I hit left or right, um, the grid holds me in place with, uh, with the highlighted cell being on the far left column. So here I've scrolled all the way to the left using the arrows. I'm scrolling to the right. And then as I hit the, um, the variable where it's right on the edge, now I'm locked into that first column in the data grid until I get back towards the very beginning. And when I get all the way back to the very beginning, then I'm unhooked from being in the first column. Or if I get all the way to the far end and there's no more scrolling to the right to be had, I'm unhooked again. So it's just kind of weird, to be honest. I'm not quite sure why that is. I just wanted to show that to you um, so you guys can kind of play with it yourselves and see what you think. Thanks. Hi, and welcome to Rocky Fish. Hi, and welcome to Simple Data Management for Faster Discoveries. My name is John Johnson, and I'm going to be walking you through this course that was originally delivered for the National Institute of Health Library, where we provided this course for a one-hour session, although it did go over a little bit, so we're going to try to keep it within time. The goal of this course is to teach you about how you can simply manage your data that you collect and analyze during research. The skills you'll learn as part of the how-to version of this training are going to provide you with the ability to quickly and efficiently manage your data using either Excel or Rocketfish, the software developed by my company, Second Nature Software. Now, let's talk about goals of this course. First, you're not just going to hear me talk because we're actually going to walk through an example. However, in this recording, there is no live audience, so we probably won't be taking any questions. If you do have questions, please feel free to email me at john.johnson at secondnaturesoft.com. I am happy to answer any questions that you have about this recording. Second, we're not going to learn everything about data management because it's a huge field and for most people, it's a boring topic of necessity. For me, it's not because I love data management. It's what I do. However, um, because of that, we are just going to touch on the essentials and we're not just going to go over the high level and concepts and anecdotes. We're actually going to get into some real examples with some data sets I prepared for this training. Now, the question is, why would we not teach you everything and why wouldn't we just give you the concepts? Well, because we want you to be able to use this right away in your job. So now that we're in agreement, let's go ahead and talk about the real goals for this course. First off, we're going to talk about the concepts of simple data management. Those include the data lake paradigm, which has become very popular uh, in the last couple of years with the expansion of cloud-based management. We're going to talk about data prep in terms of how you can get data ready for your data lake and for analysis. And finally, we're going to talk about how you can manage this process effectively with agile data. Now, once we've gone over these concepts, hopefully in just about 15 minutes, we'll then move on to be able to evaluate a simple data management paradigm where we're going to talk about how you can prepare and analyze your data and we'll actually provide you with a real example. Now, let's go ahead and get started. First off, a little bit about me. My name is John Johnson. You can see me on the right as part of our trip to London. Uh, there's my fiance Orfina with me and of course, we were enjoying London greatly, but now you know who is talking to you, so you don't have to keep asking the question in your head. In terms of my history of employment, I've actually worked as a systems engineer for a little over eight years. And for four of those years, I was a project manager and a program manager. Um, my last uh, corporate occupation was as a senior project manager in charge of two teams delivering a uh, prototype for the National Archives, which was uh, their new cloud-based records management system. Um, Brand new technology, very exciting, and we've drawn on some of those uh, cutting edge uh, concepts that we used in this presentation as well. However, a little over a year ago, uh, two partners um, and I, we decided to start a company, Second Nature Software, and we're going to show you our tool, which will help you perform simple data management as part of the demo of this uh, training. So moving on, let's talk about real concepts of simple data management. First. We need to define simple data management before we can move forward. So let's go ahead and start with the definition. 
the Dhamma Handbook, which is, Dhamma is the uh, organization of data managers, of course there is one, um, they have a very long definition, which is about uh, the development, execution, and supervision of plans, policies, programs, and practices that control, protect, and deliver, enhance value of data and information assets. So that that is kind of a long-winded um, explanation, but it's holistic. For us, we're going to simplify. We'll say that data management is the collection of processes used to deliver valuable information. And the collection of processes, we're talking about not the thing you want to avoid, but the process being an input and output that uh, uses tools and has constraints. So when we talk about a simple data management process, we're talking about a collection of simple processes to deliver valuable information, which is the key. So as valuable information is our focus, let's talk about paradigms. Here on the left, we're going to talk about data warehouses briefly. This is the traditional uh, paradigm for managing your data. At the center is data governance, and the implementation of this paradigm is a data warehouse. If you've ever used a form to input data, you have used a data warehouse before. So this could be electronic health records, or it could have been if you were answering a survey. That's normally going into a data warehouse. Um, on the right side, we have the data lake paradigm. And in this paradigm, it's much more like your file system on your desktop or on a share drive. It's a bring what you got scenario. You've got the unstructured data, you've got the semi-structured data where you've got some text with some descriptions, but maybe it's not fully structured. And then you have, um, of course, your emails, images, things like that. Now, you can pipe the information out of a data lake into a data warehouse. And that, of course, requires a, an extraction, transformation, and load procedure. But in general, this is how we all manage our data. We have our clean and organized data right next to our raw data. And in research, we need it all because we need to be able to validate the discoveries um, that are made and be able to replicate them in the future. So when we talk about research and most organizations in terms of how they manage um, their changing data sets, they do so in a data lake. Now, what are the benefits of a data lake? And when do you use a data lake or a data warehouse? This comparison here is not mine, um, but I think it does a great job of exploring what are the benefits of the data lake paradigm. First off, you have data from all stages. So you can verify the data as it moves from raw to intermediate to ready transferred form. Whenever you have a data structure like this, it's easy to reuse the data. And because you don't have to fit the data set that you put in a data lake into a paradigm like you do with the warehouse, that means that you can adapt your data so that it fits into whatever you're analyzing. So it's very reusable. It's low cost because it's just a file system. And in fact, this has driven a lot of the advances in um, low cost cloud-based computing. It's very fast, very agile, of course, because of its reconfigurability. And in terms of security, this is still maturing, but most of the security at the um, highest levels of restriction are, are looking at um, concepts of encryption. And then lastly, you have the users of these systems where in a data lake, it's gonna be mostly researchers and data scientists. Now on the other side, the data warehouse is very structured. It's a database. Examples are things like the bank account um, or your bank accounts or your uh, Microsoft access files or the healthcare records that you may be um, accessing online. In terms of a data lake, we're talking about Google search, the archives, um, the, your team or your organization's archives, and of course, your shared drives. So, when we think about what is it that you likely use in a research scenario, you're almost certainly managing your data in a data lake. Now this of course adds a requirement, which is to keep your data lake clean. And so when we talk about that, you must have the following. You must have raw data, the original data set as gathered or received. You must have the tidy data, which is your final cleaned and organized data set where the rows are your observations and the columns are your variables. And then you need that history. How did you get the raw data into a tidy data form? And then lastly, your codebook. So the description of all your variables. When you have all these four elements together, you've got the ready data. And this ready data should be stored in an open format because that way it can be easily parsed and read by any search engines that are being used to mine it in the future. And at that point, it's very easy to use and integrate and find and share. You as the user and the primary user of this data when you prepare it can also know where you are when you're uh, when you're analyzing your data set so you don't get lost. So there's a benefit to the individual and the organization in terms of keeping your data lake clean. But data preparation is the work that turns raw data into ready data. So that's what we're going to talk about here. First off, data preparation 
is work. And I don't think that should be ignored. For most data scientists, it is the majority of their day. As you can see on the right, uh, there's a graphic that shows the breakdown of how data scientists spend most of their day, and 60% report spending most of their day cleaning and organizing data. And that seems to be indicative of many other studies like the New York Times in 2014 identified that up to 80% of the work could be just the cleaning and organizing and gathering of data sets. So this is, this is where you're going to spend most of your time, and you shouldn't feel bad about that because it is the work and it requires a human to do this. But when we're talking about the steps of data preparation, you're going to be cleaning your data, getting out the errors and missing values, separating out columns that have multiple values in them. You're going to be integrating that data in terms of multiple sources or multiple transformations. You're going to be transforming that data where you're going to derive new values like measures like BMI from uh, weight and height, which we'll do later, as well as um, being able to pivot or transform your data in terms of aggregating your records if you have multiple samples on an assay tray, and then extracting your data set, subsetting it appropriately um, so that you can do the analysis that you're aiming to do. Now, this process is not linear. It may feel linear, but it's not. You're going to iterate through it as you analyze, you're going to get new um, new insights into your data, which you're going to want to bring back so that you can transform your data further and understand it better. So it's a very iterative process, just like research. Now, in terms of managing this process, because it, it, we're talking about a very loose approach to um, data management, and intentionally so, we need to have some structure. And the way you can add structure to this efficiently is with agile data management. Now, the traditional data management approaches are very waterfall. You design your research, you put together a plan, how you're going to manage and collect the data, then you execute. However, nobody actually implements research this way because you learn as you go. So Agile fits this paradigm better where you're iterating on your research. As you learn, you continue to gather more information, adjust your tests appropriately, and then explore further. This is kind of what some people talk about as being a, um, an, improv an improvisational approach to research. Um, now, benefits of data management is that you reduce the waste up front. You don't have um, a lot of planning, which frankly isn't going to be used, but you do the upfront planning that's necessary. You want to make sure you set goals and, and have a way to secure and back up your data, and we'll talk about that in a second. But um, it will also allow you, therefore, to incorporate new information and uh, be able to meet your compliance as well as we go, and we'll talk about scaling. The key though is, is that with Agile in general, there's this idea that there's less discipline. And in fact, that couldn't be more wrong. There's more discipline in this approach because you need to consistently and repeatedly evaluate, is my data management plan effective? Is it meeting my goals? Do I need to make adjustments? And so what you see here on the right is um, a uh, image from AgileDataModeling.com. You can see it starts with architecting and doing some requirements modeling. And then um, every time that you conduct an experiment, in this case, a cycle, you do a little bit more detailed uh, modeling and requirement analysis before you actually execute a test. Now, this isn't the, the best uh, uh, picture, but if you want to learn more, go to Agile, AgileModeling.com and you can find out more about that. So how are we going to actually implement Agile Data Management? Now, there are three key documents that are going to make this work, and they're not big documents. They're very short. The first one is a data management plan. You're going to put this together through leadership, and at the very beginning, you're going to set the goals. What are we going to do with the data now with this research, and how will this data be used in the future? So you make sure you're keeping that in mind as you design your data sets. Second, you're going to talk about roles. Who's going to collect it, who's going to manage that data, and who's going to own it. It may all be the same person. It may be that the owner is the PI, of, or maybe your lab manager is managing all the data sets together. You need to have that clearly defined. Then you also need to identify security. How are people going to access this data? Where, how are we going to ensure that any PHI or, um, or PII is going to be secured and not accessed by those who shouldn't have access to it? And then lastly, and very importantly, backup. You need to make sure you have a good backup system. Um, there are many approaches to this, but there needs to be one in place that will ensure the continuity of your data if something bad happens. Now, once you have this high level plan of how you're going to manage the data, next you need to design your data. And this is going to work for most of your tests, but you're going to also adjust this as you go. You're going to start with what are your research questions and break down your tests that you plan to perform. And then from those tests, you want to identify what are the general data requirements and can we classify them into groups? 
And once you do so, you understand the sources and the variables that you want to collect. You also want to understand how do those data sets relate to each other and ensure that you have the data needed to relate one group of data to another if they're going to be analyzed together. And once you have this data, data design in place, you've based it off your research plan and your DMP, your data management plan, you can then begin to get ready for your first test where you take your data design and you refine it further for your first test, your first design, you run that test, and then at the end, you review, okay, did my data design work for me? Yes or no? If yes, continue forward with the next test. If no, make adjustments and ensure continuity across all of your tests. And then in terms of the data management plan, do we have any issues with these four essential elements of managing our data, goals, roles, security, backup? If so, make make sure you address that immediately. Now you shouldn't see a lot of change in your data management plan, but you're gonna see a lot of change in terms of your tests because you expect it to. And in this way, you're only doing the planning you need to at the right time. But in terms of how you can scale agile data management, there's this concept of agile data governance. And traditional governance is all about ensuring that you map your variables, that you do the right unit conversions, and everyone's data can fit together. What's great about Agile Data Governance is because you continue to review and refine your data design and ensure consistency in your data set, you only have to map once for all of your tests. You don't have to map over and over and over again. So this actually allows you to scale your data in a first order way based on the number of variables. And here on the right, you can see how these tests, which are all in alignment with the data design, can then be mapped to the team archive. And so if you have a difference in terms of, say, one of the variable names like gender and sex, you can ensure that that mapping is done right. And so this map once data integration paradigm is extremely efficient for, um, for continuing to integrate and manage data sets as they're being conducted by different independent parties. Um, but of course, it requires that diligence. It requires um, the discipline of Agile data to make it work. So now that we have understood the three main concepts, let's do a quick review. Scientists and resource organizations use data lakes because they're faster and they're cheaper than the alternative of using a data warehouse. We, when we talk about data lakes, we're talking about making sure that your data is in a ready data state, which means that it's open source formats for all of your raw, tidy data, your data history, and as well as your code book, which will describe all of your variables. And then in, to get your data from the raw data you collect into that ready data state is the process of data prep. And so that's where the work is and what we, we talked about in terms of cleaning, integrating, transforming data. And lastly, the agile data management approach allows you to optimize your time when you're managing your data in a data lake paradigm. So this is going to save you a lot of time. It's going to remove a lot of wasteful planning and disagreements, and it's going to give you the flexibility to learn and improve your research much more quickly and have faster discoveries with a data lake uh, management paradigm. I hope that's been useful. In the next section, we're going to talk about how to actually execute data preparation, and I'm going to teach you uh, key tricks and tips in both Excel and Rockfish on how to prepare your data sets.